Hello everyone, welcome back. So, so in today's video, we'll take up some problems from the check your understanding section of kinematics. So this is the 20th question and we have two cyclists, Mike and Josh, who simultaneously start uh, moving towards each other from two towns that are D distance apart. Okay. Josh rides a cycle at 25 kmph and Mike rides a cycle at 15 kmph. The moment they start, a fly also starts from Josh towards Mike and after reaching Mike, it immediately returns towards Josh. The fly continues back and forth motion between the cyclists till the cyclists meet. Air speed of the fly is 30 kmph and uh, wind is present in this particular problem. So then the wind speed is given to be 10 km per hour. Okay, and the direction is given to be towards Mike. So basically from Josh's direction towards Mike's direction. Now the question is we have to find the total distance S that is flown by the fly. Okay, so give this problem a good try guys and then check out the solution. Okay. Okay. So let's say this is a rough sketch guys. So Mike is on the left and Josh is on the right and they're moving towards each other. And if you guys remember the wind flow direction uh, is towards Mike. So it'll be towards a left direction and the speed is given to be 10 kmph. Okay. So now Josh is riding the cycle at 25 kmph and Mike is riding the cycle at 15 kmph. Okay, so now we have a fly over here whose uh, air speed, which is the relative speed in air, is given to be 30 kmph. Okay, and the fly starts near Josh. The fly will try to reach Mike and once the fly reaches Mike, it'll turn around and go towards Josh. And similarly, the fly keeps on continuing this particular motion. Okay. Okay. So basically the fly keeps moving back and forth till both the cyclists meet. Now guys, as the wind is flowing towards the left, the net speed of the fly will be 30 plus 10, which is 40 kmph while the fly is moving towards Mike. And for the return journey, the net speed is going to be 30 minus 10 because now the wind is op opposite to the direction of motion, right? So which is going to be 20 kmph. So for the leftward motion, the net speed of the fly is 40 kmph. And for the rightward motion, the net speed is 20 kmph. Okay. Now, okay, so the question again is what is the total distance flown by the fly? Okay. So now let's try to determine the time of meeting. So basically, uh, when will both the cyclists meet together? So this is pretty easy to determine because the distance between the two cyclists is given to be D and the rate at which D is decreasing is 15 plus 25. That is their approach speed, right? So the time of meeting is going to be D, which is given to be 24 kilometers divided by the total speed, which is 15 plus 25. So that is going to be 40 kilometers per hour. So this is going to be three divided by five. So I'm just going to leave it in fractions for now. So now the thing is guys in three by five hours, Mike will cover a distance of three by five multiplied by 15, which is actually nine kilometers. So Mike, let's say will be somewhere over here at a distance of nine kilometers. So obviously Josh will be at a distance of 24 minus nine, which is 15 kilometers. So this is the initial situation and this is the final situation. Okay, so now let's try to observe what is a fly's motion like. So the fly, let's say it begins from Josh. So when the fly is moving towards the left, its speed is 40, right? And when it's coming back, its speed is 20. Now guys, we can actually see something very interesting. So finally, when both the cyclists meet, the fly will also be somewhere over here. Right. Okay. So now if you observe the displacement of Josh is 15 kilometers towards the left. And if you remember the fly also started from the same position as Josh, right? So the fly's displacement will also be 15 kilometers towards the left. Okay. So this is the next important fact. And that is the net displacement of the fly from the initial position is 15 kilometers towards the left. Okay. So now, now the thing is guys, the fly initially moves towards the left and then it takes the right, then it takes the left and its motion will be something like this till finally it converges where the cyclists meet. Right. So the thing is, it's it's leftward and rightward motion is not very symmetric. OK, so what I'm going to do here is that I am going to assume that the fly moved towards the left for T hours. So if I assume that it moves towards the left for T hours, then it will move towards the right for three by five minus T hours. Why? Because it's total air time is three by five hours. Right. OK, so this directly implies that the rightward motion air time is three by five minus T hours. OK, so now as I know the net displacement, guys, uh, all I have to do is add up all the displacements in the left direction and subtract all the displacements in the right direction. And uh, the final answer should be 15 kilometers. OK, so the total displacement to the left uh, equals the speed towards the left, which is 40 kmph uh, times the total time of travel in the left direction, which is actually T. Right. And similarly, the total displacement to the right will be the speed in the rightward direction multiplied by the total time of travel in the rightward direction, which is three by five minus T. So basically 40 T minus 20 times of three by five minus T. This is the net displacement in the leftward direction. And this should be equal to 15 in terms of magnitude. So from here, T turns out to be nine divided by 20 hours. 
Okay, so basically the fly moves towards the left for 9 by 20 hours and to the right for 3 by 5 minus 9 by 20 hours. Okay, so now it's pretty simple to figure out the distance. All we have to do is take add these two quantities together, right? 40 into t is going to be 18 kilometers, right? Plus plus 20 multiplied by 3 by 5 minus 9 by 20. And uh, once you solve it, the answer comes out to be 21 kilometers. Okay, so that's the solution to this problem. Now let's move to the next question. Okay, guys, so this is question number 21. Okay, so the problem statement says speedometer shows speed and odometer shows the distance traveled both relative to the surface on which the vehicle moves Two conveyor belts, either of whose length is capital L are arranged along a line one after the other with a negligible gap. Okay, so it looks something like this. So let's say this is conveyor belt number one and the second belt, let's use red color for it. So this is belt number two and both have the same length L, uh, which is equal to 500 meters. Okay, and it's given that they are arranged along, along a line and they have a negligible gap in between it. So the belts are running in the same but unknown direction with constant speeds of u1 and u2. So let's just assume that they are running hmm, in the rightward direction. So first belt runs with the speed of u1 and the second belt runs with the speed of u2. Okay, then a toy car installed with both the instruments, which is basically it has a speedometer and the odometer both. It runs on the belts one after the other, spending a total time of 72 seconds on them so basically we have a toy car that starts from one end and uh, it, it starts moving mm, on one of the belts and then it starts to move on the on the belt on the right and the total time spent by the toy is 72 seconds now the speedometer shows a constant reading on each of the belts and the odometer shows a total reading of 500 meters. Uh, once again, the speedometer shows the relative speed of the toy car on the belt. Okay, so let's say it is running with the speed, it is moving with the speed of VR relative to the belt. So basically what the last line means is that VR is a constant. That's why the speedometer shows a constant reading, right? Now, odometer shows a total reading of 500. So by, basically by the time the toy car reaches the end of the second belt, the total relative distance covered is 500 meters. That's what the last line means. Why? Because the odometer shows the relative distance traveled. Now the question is, what is the speedometer readings on each of the belts? So basically we have to find what is the relative speed with which the toy cars are running on the belt. Okay guys, so let's say the relative speed with which a toy car runs on the first belt is VR1, is V r1 and similarly when in, when it reaches the other belt let's say its relative speed is vr2 now as the odometer reading is given to be equal to 500 meters so what is this 500 meters it's the relative distance traveled by toy car on the belt so let's say the toy car spends a time of t on the first belt so obviously on the second belt it will cover a total time of tau minus t or let's just write it as 72 minus t itself okay because we know the total time is 72 seconds so i'm assuming t to be spent on the blue belt and 72 minus t to be spent on the red belt so basically what the odometer reading is it's going to be vr1 multiplied by t1 plus vr2 multiplied by tau minus t okay so this is the odometer reading and it's given to be 500 meters now guys we didn't discuss one thing and uh, that is an Im important analysis and that is like okay we assume that the speed of the belt is towards the right now the question is why did i assume the speed of the car to be also to the in the rightward direction and the reason for that is the other case is not possible okay let's discuss why so okay so for understanding that we uh, let's just take the example of the treadmill right for our current example let's just take a really large treadmill and we are running at 10 kmph and the treadmill is moving backwards with 10 kmph okay and in this situation we know that we won't move we will be at this particular location so now if i ask you what is the distance traveled in the ground frame the answer will be zero because the guy isn't moving right but the relative distance traveled by this guy is not zero okay so let's say we observe for a time of t then the relative distance traveled by this boy will be 10 into t but the treadmill also moves by the same distance 10 into t so if i want to look at it as superposition so firstly the guy will go a distance of 10 t towards the right and then he comes back by a distance of 10 t so and therefore he doesn't even move so yeah the relative distance travel will be 10 t and the displacement of the treadmill itself is 10 t towards the left okay the resultant becomes zero now as let's say we increase the speed and make it 20 so now what will happen is as you can imagine the guy will start moving towards the right even with respect to ground frame right because the guy has a speed of 
20 minus 10, which is 10 kmph towards the right. So he will move towards the right. Okay. Now this is the important idea. So let's say the total distance is 100 meters. For let's say for example, say let's just take the speeds as meters per second. So his ground frame speed is 10 meter per second towards the right. He has to cover a distance of 100 meters. He will be able to do it in 10 seconds. So now the question is, what is the distance traveled in the ground frame? He started from this position and he ended at this position. The difference in positions is 100 meters. So the total distance traveled is 100 meters. But the distance traveled in the relative frame is not 100. It's in fact 20 multiplied by 10, which is 200. Okay, so this is the interesting idea. So now let's take a slightly different example. So everything remains the same. Okay, but now what happens is the belt is moving towards the right with 10 meters per second. Now, if you observe the total speed of the guy with respect to ground is 30 meters per second. So now he will cover the same distance in 100 by 30, which is 10 by 3 seconds. Okay, so now if you observe the relative distance traveled by him is 2 into 10 by 3, which is 200 by 3 meters. So S rel becomes 200 by 3, 200 by 3 meters, which is actually less than the length of the treadmill. But here, if you observe the dist relative distance traveled is twice the length of the treadmill. So basically, the idea here is that if you try to run against the treadmill, you have you will have to cover a relative distance that is greater than the length of the treadmill or basically the greater than the ground frame distance you have to travel and that you can also get an intuitive idea, right? Why? Because uh, it's going to be a vector superposition. So let's say the guy starts from here in the relative frame, he covered this much distance. Now the belt will move some distance towards the left, right? These two superposed should give you the final position. So as you can see, the relative distance is clearly greater than the final ground frame distance. Whereas in this case, it's uh, both the displacements are in the same direction. So the relative displacement of the man and the displacement of the belt, they're both in the same direction. So the relative displacement is going to be less than 100 meters. So now let's go back to our current problem. In the current problem, the total ground frame distance traveled is 2L. Whereas the relative distance they have given us in the problem, it is L. It's less than the total distance traveled, right? Which means the guy must definitely travel in the same direction as the belt is traveling. So that's the idea here. So basically the relative distance traveled by the belt will be something like this. And then the belt will belt will carry the toy some distance forward. And similarly, if on the second belt, let's say the relative distance is this much and the toy will carry it forward. So this distance over here, plus this distance is 500. Now, if he was running against the belt, then the relative distance or the odometer reading would be greater than 2L. So that is one way to figure out that the toy will move in the same direction as the belt is moving. Okay. Okay. So now all we have to do is write once one more simple equation. So what is the ground frame displacement of the toy cart? It, it's equal to, uh, it is L plus L, which is 2L, right? And the ground frame speed is VR1 plus 20 kmph. So VR1 plus 20 kmph multiplied by t which is the total time in the first belt plus vr2 plus 30 times tau minus t equals 2l which is 1000 meters okay so now if you observe vr1 into t and vr2 into tau minus t we know the value right it's 500 so let's just su directly substitute it over here so we'll get 20t plus 30 into 72 minus t plus 500 equals 1000 so i'll just send it to the other side and write it as 500 Okay, so now one more thing guys. So it's important to convert the units, right? Because this is in KMPH and everything else is in SI units. So basically let's just multiply it with five by 18 as well. Okay, and after solving, you'll get T equals 36 seconds. So basically the card spends a total time of 36 in the first belt and a time of 36 in the second belt. Okay, so now the question is, what is the relative speed in the first belt and the second belt? Okay, so now that is pretty simple because we know that the total time spent by the cart in the first belt is 36 seconds. So with a speed of VR1 plus 20, times with 36. So this is basically the ground frame displacement of the cart in the first belt, right? So that is going to be equal to L itself. So this is going to be equal to 500 meters. And the second equation will be VR2 plus 30 multiplied by multiplied by 36. This should also be equal to 500. So VR1 would be equal to 500 divided by 36. So this is in meters per second. So we have to multiply it with 18 by 5 minus 20. So this will be 50 minus 20. That is 30 kilometers per hour. And the VR2 is going to be 50 minus 30, which is 20 kilometers per hour. Okay. So yeah, that was all for this question, guys. If you enjoyed the video, uh, please do like, share and subscribe. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching.